Well, Elric Melnimide is back with a new book. How y'all doing? For this review, of course, I'm going to do Michael Moorcock's latest book and his famous character, Elric Melnimide, that's the, Cit the Citadel of Forgotten Myths. You know, it came out December of 2022, here I am January 2023, because now I just finished reading this, and, and I'm going to do a review on it, of course. I gave, I bought two copies of this, one for me and one for my mother. I hope she enjoys it. I got into Elric when I was in so uh, sophomore year in high school. My great uncle introduced me to my mother's copies, you know, um, like these. Uh, Elric Sagas Part 1 and 2, which was had six books. Morcock came out with two other novels after, not too long after that, uh, Fortress of the Pearl and The Avenge of the Rose. So, and to make it short, I went ahead and got the White Wolf editions, which included that. Of course, he came with the Moonbeam Roads trilogy in the early 2000s. I went ahead and grabbed those. And now, here it is, 2022, a new Elric book um, right here. This expends, extends the world of, of, Elric, of Elric. No, normally we are familiar, for those Elric fans, we are familiar with the world of Elric through the maps, as you can find right here. It was originally adapted by, Jim Coth by um, James Cawthorn. But these stories have nothing to do with any of these parts of the world. Um, we are going to explore the other side of the world. Um, while the world is not flat, it's kind of, it, it describes sort of egg shape, and is on the other side of that, we explore new lands and new adventures for Elric and his companion Moonglum. It is in three stories, two shorter ones and a one long one. The longer one was, you know, written for this book. The other two were published previously. Let me explain. The first story in this book was published in Swords and Dark Magic, The New Sword and Sorcery, edited by Jonathan Strahan and Lou Anders back in 2010, originally titled Red Pearls. The second story in the book was published as Black Petals in the March and April edition of Weird Tales magazine, published in 2008. Which I have that one right here. I grabbed this one when I saw Michael Moorcock's new Elric story on it. I grabbed two issues of this, one for me and one for my um, great uncle who got me introduced to this, you know, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. So there's that. But... You know, I'll have to get those two books now because he put them all that in a brand new story right here. And so let's see what these stories are about. The book explains that, you know, this is at the time between the books um, Bane of the Black Sword and Stormbringer, which are the last two books of the Elric saga. Elric has some um, curiosities about the origin of his people and unanswered questions about them. You know, Elric B. Melnebenean is the last um, emperor of an empire that ruled the young kingdoms for 10,000 years and has ceased ruling them for the last few hundred by the time he was around. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just all of his kingdom and, you know, the young kingdoms that um, went there. You know, Elric goes on the other side of the world, and in these new places, he finds out that his people have, through the previous past, um, had a diaspora, spread, you know, some splittings of his uh, people, and they all take a different walks here. And he meets, you know, he finds um, what happens to him, you know, on his quest in these certain areas that he visits. The first story, again, originally titled Red Petals in the um, anthology, but not so much here. I wonder why. Okay, Elric and Moongloom and a few companions, they travel with a merchant ship across the other side to visit a city there that, upon visiting, Elric meets up with a relative of his, um, pretty much his aunt on his mother's side. But it didn't say she was Melnibanean. She was a, she's descended from the Forn, which is the name of the dragon's race that Elric's people are associated with. For those who don't know, Elric's race of Melnibaneans have a close relationship with the dragons. Now, most of the time, we're familiar with their relationship, their, their dragons are riding mounts that sleep for long periods of time to be woken up in times for attack. Well, for the longest time, that's how um, that's how we're familiar with these dragons. Over the years, Moorcock, through um, Elric, the making of the Sorcerer comic series that he did, and, a, and a, I think a little bit in the multiverse comics and a couple other sources, he describes a more close relationship between the Melnominians and dragons and how they came about to existence as they are. Um, so he meets his aunt, who gives him a quest to go to his, oh, he has a cousin, another middle, middle, oh, sorry, 
Imelda Monet and um, Prince, now later turned pirate, to the testament of Elric's aunt. And she says, we need to go and grab these red pearls that he has captured here. And this is a shorter story, so I won't give out the details of that. But that's the basis of his quest. And, it, you know, again, we get a little bit further understanding between Elric and the dragons. And, you know, as it does kind of end quickly about you know, this. Many of these original stories do. Again, this is a traditional Elric book in that sense. But, not unsatisfying for us Elric fans, and if you, especially those who don't like those, as another YouTuber calls it, phone book fantasies there, you want short, sweet, plot-driven adventure, this will satisfy that desire. The second story, again not named, but you know, originally titled Red Petals here, was is a story that um, where Elric, along with his, further into the and lands where he is exploring, he's running out of... Um, potions and you know and herbs and you know elixirs and stuff to keep him strength keep his strength up uh for those of you who don't know elric before he had his famous sword stormbringer he has to rely on potions and you know and herbs and things like that or, or spells to give him his strength uh, that would that we would normally have or else he, he could barely lift his hand if he didn't have it his sword stormbringer which he tries to refrain from using throughout most of the story um, has the ability to, you know, when he kills, the souls are drained from them and feeds the sword, and that some of the excess power goes to him, and some goes to his god, Ariok, you know, for any favors that Elric may need for him. So, but he's heard about a plant that, if you can find it where it blooms just right at night, under, the, you know, certain, over a certain specific time, you know, he can harvest the leaves and the seeds, and they can help permanently um, get rid of that um, his thin blood as it calls it so he would have regular strength he doesn't need herbs or spells or stormbringer anymore he can go about as normal that's his quest now he found out where it might be and of course before he shows up there was a, there was a, a there was an expedition of a noble searching for that in that very area and of course the man who was leading it was lost so as Elward comes about he meets another search party um, uh, two women are a part of this. They're the noble's daughters. He ends up meeting his cousin, another, you know, another a cousin of his that you know who was there when he sacked his um you know Imri or the Dreaming City. So there's a little bit of tension there. But he's out to try to get the seeds for to serve himself. But he's going to tag along and you know the other search party to see if the, uh, the two girls will find his father. So do they find the plant? Um, what's what? Oppose the original party there. What's out there? That's some, um, you know, it's a dangerous world. What dangers do they find on that? I won't give into that, but um, that's where we um, skip to the next story. The third story, according to Wikipedia, is called White Steel, though again not mentioned in the book. We find Elric and Moonglum on their way to trying to go back to their home, you know, but and they heard about a path um, through the direction that they're going that will lead them back to the other side of the world and lands that they're more familiar with. Upon their journey, they come across a, a mysterious man named Orlando Funk, who you know is um, tells them about the king. You know that there's a kingdom he just came back from that produces this blue liquid that he hands to Elric Munglum. It's a blue mead derived from a honey from bees from a city, uh, you know that they're about to head into. And so, you know, they try, and Elric feels you know great sense of strength that you know from that. Same, you know, gives him a good sense of confidence and strength about that. So and he tell and, and of course Lando Funk mysteriously runs off. Later, Elric and Mungla meet up with a captured woman from a group of of um, bandits you know, um, that were part of this growing army. She ends up being the Empress Malari, who r rules the kingdom of Kirinmore. And of course, Elric looks at her and realizes she's also Melnim Min sorry of his race, Melnimanians. That's hard for me to say sometimes. Sorry. So. So she um, hires these two to protect their city um, from this uh, uh, upcoming army raised by this golden general who's now ruling them all together. So we get to know about this kingdom. This is a very peaceful kingdom. There, you know, so everyone is happy there. You know, um, it's all based on the economy of this um, blue blue mead derived from honey made by these special bees, very large bees, might I add. And so it's you know it's protected by a labyrinth you know that you know you know and, and, and as a series of caves before you enter the city. You know it looks well protected, but unfortunately there's some um, they have the enemy has grown very large and is finding ways to get past all this. 
Elric is hired, you know, along with Moonglum, to help um, her troops to you know, defend against this rising army that's about to ruin everything about them. So, now here lies the problem for Elric. Elric usually relies on his sword Stormbringer to steal the souls of you know of the enemies that he kills, gives him strength, and gives him access to. And some of those souls are part of the tithes to his patron Chaos God Ariok to lend him a hand against such things. Stormbringer is not taking any of the souls of, of those that he kills, and in so doing, he's not getting the strength from that. And also, Ariok is not answering his calls, and he's at a major disadvantage here. So, um, while Elric is trying to figure that out, he's also trying to figure out the history of this land, since this is part, you know, this is developed from his people who are, you know, who left um, from, um, from, from Diaspora a few thousand years ago, and they made this wonderful, peaceful kingdom. Now, this kingdom, you know, looks almost ideal. Elric wrecked his city, Imrir, because he had a long journey to hope to bring his people up from the decadent, um, chaos worshiping people that they are to a more enlightened one after his journeys and finding some you know um finding out what happened to his people before he he comes back to that there's no hope for his people so he leads an army and ransacks it and trying to save his betrothed simmeral he um end up accidentally killing her and so the men, men his people are now spread out in the young kingdom some hate him some are still loyal but that's that but Elric looks at this city, Karamor, and this is this looks like the ideal dream that he was looking for. But is it ideal? You know, what's the story of this place? Um, why is it all connected as blue honey? Um, where did these blue honey and the bees who produce it come from? Well, he finds out they're underground, and he'll find out the secret about this later. Um, you know, the priestesses are the ones who guard its secrets. Um, Elric's trying to figure all this out. Why is um, why is Ariok and a sword a sword not working? What? How did the city come about? Is it everything that it seems to be? And um, can they stop this army that's about to attack them? So, um, yeah, I, well, I'll leave it at that. And I'll tell you my thoughts of the overall book. So yeah, I end up enjoying this book, and I think if you're an Elric fan like I am, you there's a you know you will enjoy this book just fine. Um, uh, Mike Moorcock in an interview you can find on YouTube, um, yeah, he says that the pacing, is, he finds that the pacing is a bit odd, and I kind of see that there are some sections where, um, especially in the third story, just kind of go on and on. Um, I tend to push through such things. Many people are like, well, this story uh, put me off because it did that. I hate the story. Me, I sort of push it and look for the good in it. In the end, I did find it. You know, I you know, find it very um, enjoyable all the same. It you know, has some weird combination between the old format of separate stories put together, but the third story being longer is almost a uh, almost novel length of itself. So it, it, it seems kind of weird for me to say it's kind of a weird combination of putting those two forms together. Um, but I'm almost digressing at this point. So yeah, um, this um, this book, you know, one thing adds more depth between of Elric's uh, people about their past and some points, because as I said, they're, um, throughout the um, the Melanimanaeans are an ancient people. They ruled from Imrir and the Young Kingdoms for 10,000 years. But within that time, they had a history before. You could explore that in the comic series Elric and Making of the Sorcerer, which I think Moorcock has put in print in another volume on that. Um, you'll have to look into that. I think Del Rey Books did that. But I would suggest find a comic. But, you know, he explains um, certain histories about how his people split off and went on their own on the other side of the world and how they affected that. Um, he comes across members of his own from the ancient past and some of the ones he already knew. Um, like he meets a cousin of his who is not happy of what he did in sacking him in rear. So there's going to be tension between that. Um, meeting the character Orlando Funk, which we meet in the third story here, is a character we find often in Moorcock stories, usually a companion or a... Um, a character who comes to Elric and or other eternal champions to help him out in, the, in their quest to restore the balance in some form or fashion, either minor or small. And when I saw Orlando Funk and how he serves in the story, I th thought of, um, like in Hawkmoon, another Moorcock series, the warrior in jet and gold, Prince Gaynor the Dam, who could be both villain or um, a companion. Um, in this series, um, also eternal companion, the eternal companions there, like Jerry O'Connell and, and others. So I see um, um, Orlando Funk as a character like that. Now Moonglum, 
Elric's companion, who you know, you know, who is with him ever since upon meeting him, he stays with Elric to the end, you know, and is one of Elric's few friends. We get to hear a lot more about him and his thoughts and all that, more in depth about um, where his people comes from. I think he's given more. Um, to his character than we normally see throughout this. In the other books, as a long story short, Moonglum is, you know, we get to know him through his actions through Elric, but we don't know too much in depth about him. This book gives a little bit more. It's nice to see that. Um, you know, again, the pacing can be a bit off for some, but don't let that distract you once you get through that and you take him, you know, overall on that. Um, I think, you know, it's a good story to add to your collection of Elric fans. Suppose you're new to the series and you want the up-to-date Elric books. You don't want to search around old bookstores trying to hunt down all the volumes. Well, have no fear. Prior to release of this novel, you can go out and get the original stories um, in brand new editions. The, and they are in three volumes. The first one, called Elric and Melda Binet, will have the first four of the series. Elric and Melda Binet, The Fortress of the Pearl, Sailor on the Seas of Fate, and Weirded the White Wolf. The second volume, called Stormbringer, will have the last four books. And they will have The Vanishing Tower, Revenge of the Rose, Bane of the Black Sword, and Stormbringer. So as I said, you know, Citadel of Forgotten Myths exists within the last two books, the um, Bane of the Black Sword and Stormbringer in the second volume. And then you can go ahead and go and get the third volume, um, which, involved, which is the Moonbeam Rose trilogy. So that will have um, The Dream Thief's Daughter, The Scrailing Tree, and The White Wolf's Son. So there you go, The Citadel of Forgotten Myths, the new Elric stories by Michael Moorcock. You know, in 2000, you know, late 2022, this is a his famous character in a sword and sorcery genre. We have, you know, a character he started from 1960s when he was 20, and here he is still producing it today. A lot of you guys love it, and for those of you guys started, you can pick this up along with the other, um, other volumes of the Elric saga to fill you in with new additions. Thank you all for watching, you have a nice day.